finally, the only man to save the Enterprise before graduating high school. Please welcome Will Wheaton! The best kind of crap load. No, I, I think if a general consensus was everybody's had some time, but we want to get sooner to questions than later. But I, this is the anniversary year, in case nobody had sprung that on you, right? 25 years in the good way. Here's a question I don't know if any, I've heard anybody ask. I may have done it in some private interviews. Can we go down the line? And I'd like to ask everybody, what your memory of the first time you met Gene when you were auditioning and casting? Who cares, really? <laughs> Give me one thought, Marina, and then we'll all right, go. All right, all right. The first time I met Gene Roddenberry was when I uh, had my first callback for Next Generation. I was, uh, I, I don't know if I had turned 14 yet or, or if, if I, was, I was about to turn 14. And I remember uh, I was a huge Star Trek fan before I worked on Next Generation. I, I was real, I'd been into science fiction and fantasy and horror and, and genre stuff my entire life. So when I got to go audition to be on Next Generation, I went and met Gene Roddenberry for the, uh, for the first time. And it actually gave me, I messed up my audition because I just geeked out in the, in the room. And I had a really bad audition. And uh, uh, after the thing was over, I called my agent from a pay phone, kids ask your parents. And, and, I, uh, and I said, I just don't think I went, I did a very good job. And, uh, cause I was just so excited to meet him. And apparently they had called her and said, we don't think he did a very good job, but we think he can be better. So I got to go back in later that afternoon. And that was the beginning of what became a really wonderful relationship with Gene for me. I guess I was around 14 when I met Gene. <laughs> He was a highway patrolman at the time. You were working in a mine shaft in the Old West then. That's right. Busted me in El Paso. Yeah. Uh, no, I... Uh, anyway. El Paso, yeah! Garden Spot of Texas. Uh, no, I'll tell you what. I, uh, I, I met Gene... Uh, I have no memory of that. I'm old. What do you want? Uh, and, I, I do remember, you know, Gene asking me right off the bat, Gene had a very high voice. I, if you've never met him, it was strange. He was a large man, but he talked kind of like up here, didn't he? Yeah. He yeah. Had this weird, with his hands. With his hands, and he sort of talked like, would you mind changing the color of your skin? <laughs> I said, no problem. You know, what, what can it be? Uh, I went through like 50 makeup tests, uh, every color in the rainbow. They put them all on a reel to show to Gene. We all went into his screening room to see all the different colors and have him choose one. The first one came up, it was gold. He went, that's fine. <laughs> and that was it. And I, all I can say is I'm glad that the bubblegum pink didn't come up first. <laughs> um, I, first time I met Gene, I was 14 years old and, um, well, not quite 14. Well, you, obviously I was very young. Um, because I'm only 39 now. Um, it's exciting, Marina and I are both turning say, 40 this year. You're both turning 40 this year, Will. And, uh, you look good. Thank you, so do you. Thank you. Um, I met him at the auditions, although I didn't know who he was, I have to say. I, I'm, you know, I know you're gonna, all gonna hate me, but I wasn't a big Star Trek fan. Um, and, um, ooh, I know. I, in fact, um, it was kind of ironic because about two months before I started auditioning, 
a friend of mine came to visit me from England and she wanted to go and see Star Trek IV The Bo Voyage Home. And I was like, oh no, really? Can't we go and say something else? Really, you wanna go see Star Trek? And she was like, yes I do, because it's not gonna be out in England for about a year. And I went, oh, blimey. Anyway, so I went, so I went to see Star Trek, which I actually really enjoyed the movie. I was very surprised. So I really enjoyed the movie. Um, and, but I didn't know Gene, I didn't know Gene had created Star Trek. I didn't know anything about it. All I knew was there was this guy in the audition who seemed to be in charge. You know, and, um, but, and so, but after I got cast, obviously, you know, all my fellow thespians were like, what do you mean you don't know who Jim Roddenberry is? And I had to do some homework. And um, he, was, he, he was really um, a dirty old man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he, um, he liked the ladies. Uh, or maybe it was just me, but anyway. Um, but no, he was, he, he did, he had an eye for the ladies, but that was all he had, just an eye. No hands, no feet, no nothing, right? Just the eyes. But no, he was a really great guy, but you know, we knew him as a person as well as, as uh, you know, the big bird of the galaxy. And uh, he was a really cool guy who used to sneak off to the, Beverly, to the Bel Air Country Club to have a drink and eat chocolate because he wasn't allowed to by Major. So um, he was just a regular guy who, you know, tried to do things behind his wife's back. <laughs> and from there I plead the fifth. Okay. Um, uh, when I met Gene, he was 14. Actually, uh, the first audition, I, unlike these guys, they had, I don't know about, about the bar, but, but uh, most of them had like many, many auditions. Did you have a lot of auditions? I, I, had, uh, I had three. Three, okay, yeah, because I had two. And the second one, the fir well, the first and second one I, I met, there was Gene in the, in the room. I didn't actually meet him, but they said, oh, here, Michael, this is Gene Roddenberry and Bob Justman, and, and uh, I think Pike or one of those guys was and that was the first time I met him. And like, like Will, I was a big fan of the original, so when I met him, I was, I was cool, but I was ex excited inside. I mean, it was kind of neat. It was, you know, and that was it. <laughs> Actually, the very, the very interesting thing was that they said, okay, thank you very much. And they said, uh, Michael, could you uh, wait outside because uh, there's a video you gave us, and, you know, your audition video, and we want to give it back to you. And I didn't think anything about it. I just went, yeah, okay. And I went outside and they told me right after the audition that I had the part and then that day they sent me to see Westmore. So that day that they chose me, I was I went in to do my makeup work with Westmore and did all the prosthetic stuff that he had me do. So that was it. What was on the, the tape? Episodes of Chips? <laughs> I, think, I think it was uh, him as the, the extra on the Mary Tyler Moore show. Uh, you, you know, some of I, your finest work. You know, I'm gonna erase the pictures of you guys in here. Right? <laughs> Let me see, yeah, LeVar, no. <laughs> I was a big fan of Chips. Well, you know, you know, Woo! that was just- Right? Who didn't love Michael Dorn on Chips? I mean, punch who? You know, LeVar, LeVar said, I mean, they, were, they were ragging me about it, and they said, oh, you know, yeah, you what? your lines on chips, all, you remember all your lines. I said, I only had two lines. It was, go get a punch, and it's okay, I'm all right, go get a punch. That, that was it. You were my favorite chip. You really were. Still, by the way. Sorry, I'm Team Grossy. You were, the la you were the last one cast, Michael, weren't you? Because it was, it was a race to get your prosthetics done before yeah, they start shooting. Yeah, in fact, they were, I think you guys were already filming. Uh, and, I was, um, and I was getting makeup. And I don't even think that they didn't, they didn't introduce me to, the, to these guys. It took us a year to speak to you, didn't it? No, <laughs> barely. But you know, I didn't care. Um, you know, at that point, you know, you got, a, you got a pilot for a series. So I don't care if they never talk to you as long as the check cleared. Well, whoa, in all whoa, fairness, whoa. Michael, in all fairness, you would come in at like five o'clock in the morning and get into makeup, 
and we'd all be gone by the time you got out of makeup. So it was six months before we know what the hell you looked like. <laughs> and you know, I actually, I, 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 would, I would go on the set, I think the first, you know, couple of weeks, and I'd go on the set, and nobody would say anything to me, because they just, you know, out of makeup, because they just didn't know. No, we didn't like you. <laughs> You know, I, I feel like you know, I'm, I'm, the, I'm the Hun flying over, you know, England, and they got just taking shots at me. You know? uh, no. Uh, Welcome to being on a panel with Brent. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it was it was it was very interesting. I mean, they just stuck me on the, on the bridge one day. That was my first thing. They just stuck me up there and didn't say anything. And I think these guys are probably going, "What?" And, uh, and that was it, but um, after a while, they, they kind of knew I was going to be around, um, uh, despite all their best efforts. Um, <laughs> but, uh, so, so yeah, it was very interesting, very interesting. But I was the last one, I mean, that was just an afterthought. In fact, the story goes is that I said, uh, I called and I said, uh, I really want to do Next Generation, and my agent called and they said, no, no, we're sorry, it's already cast, we'll see you if there's something open for you later. That means, you know, don't call us, we'll call you. And I went, okay, fine. And then two weeks later, I got a call. They said, well, they want to see you as part of a Klingon. And uh, my agent said, uh, what's a Klingon? Oh. And, uh, I said, don't worry, I'll take care of it. And uh, <laughs> so that was it. I don't know that I was the first person. I was, well, I, I was cast early. Yeah. yeah. Um, I had actually met Bob Justman a few years uh, before, several years before. Um, the, the, my best memory of Gene is, is him taking me to lunch uh, not long after we started. And like Will and Michael, I was a huge fan of the original series. Um, so it was a real thrill to, to be invited to lunch um, with Gene. And what I took away from that afternoon was just how surprised I was at how human he was. Because in my mind, he was this great visionary who had created something that I loved really dearly and I knew was popular all over the world. But to see him eat and drink <laughs> some little <laughs> dribble out of the side of his mouth, <laughs> drop crumbs. He had egg salad on his tie, didn't he? A lot. A lot. A lot. <laughs> a lot. Would you like some egg salad? <laughs> I'll have an order of egg salad. We knew what was coming next. The tie was going to be covered in it. Here we go. Well, you know, Sir Patrick was supposed to be joining us Who? today. Who? Oh, some, some guy that thought he had it. He was getting a paycheck, I guess. Wait, wait. Gandalf was going to be here? <laughs> so, in his absence, let's tell our best Sir Patrick story. I know there's only one. Or two. No, really, here's your chance, guys. <laughs> because no one will ever see this again. Today. Oh, yeah, right. Because, of course, the internet doesn't exist, right? Okay, I'll tell, I'll tell the first one. Um, you know, Troy used to have these wonderful lines, you know, deep and meaningful lines like, um, Captain, he's hiding something. <laughs> right? And generally, you know, 99 times out of 100, we had really good guest stars on the show, and they, I didn't need to say, Captain, he's hiding something. It was pretty obvious, right? So, um, I think the last time I said it, and then I went and spoke to the producers and said I, I never wanted to say it again. Um, I said it, and Patrick, who, I don't know, got out of bed the wrong side that morning, had a fight with the wife, I don't know what happened, but he said, we know that, you stupid cow. <laughs> you waste of space. And then he looked at me and he went and ran and he hid behind Brent. <laughs> so I just walked on over to him and I said, excuse me, your majesty. I'm just an actress, okay? I say the lines, I don't write them. And there's no point in you hiding behind Brent Spiner because he doesn't really have superhuman strength, you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> My 
my favorite Patrick Stewart story is, uh, uh, I can only tell the first half of it, and, oh. and then, listen, you're gonna understand why, and then those of you who are able to fill in the second half will do it on your own, and the children who I am sparing by not telling the second half won't have any idea what's going on, which is awesome. <laughs> We were on the bridge one day, and I don't remember what we were doing or what it was. Just it was like it was just me and 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 and, and Patrick. And Patrick says, "You know, Ensign Crusher, in days of old, ensigns performed certain favors for their captains." True story. <laughs> Brent, you Patrick. I don't really remember doing that. <laughs> you know, Will. Perhaps now is the time. <laughs> you know, I'm so sorry I couldn't be here. And yet, here I am. I, I, I honestly, I, I have Patrick's stories, none of them can I tell you. It's uh, at least not my favorites. So I, I don't want to bore you with the bad ones. The good ones, you'll never know. <laughs> Maybe this would be a good time to go to questions now. Bad, why don't we do that? We got the line going already, we're all set with what we need to do? Right over here, Okay. the line. We're ready to go. <laughs> We have a, a special surprise for LeVar. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. A surprise for LeVar. <laughs> All right, so um, my friend's voice is kind of uh, sore, um, but she wanted to know, um, for the entire cast, um, how inspiring is it to work with uh, LeVar Burton? And uh, how inadequate do you feel next to him, standing on stage? <laughs> just, just wondering. Is that a real question? <laughs> it's my daughter. <laughs> and her best friend, Cora. Michaela! Michaela! Yes! Off to college next year. Amazing. Uh, you know why? I, I remember you when you were an embryo. You said the funniest things when you were an embryo. Oh my God. <laughs> and then when you became a fetus, you were hysterical. Oh, just, oh, nothing but laughs in those days. You, you are very loved. Now, go away. <laughs> Goodbye, guys. I'm Caleb, friend. Cora. What? Bye. 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 Michaela Burton and Cora, everybody. Well, that tuition check hasn't cleared yet. So Soon to be dead people. Yeah. <laughs> I love that Cora is just like one name I share. Yes. So cool. Not many can carry it off, and yep. yet she does. She does. Okay, go. Hey. Hi. How's it going? This is, all right. Uh, from Uncle Dorn and uh, Marina Sirs, I know you two played characters in Mass Effect, uh, Major Epinesia and Ganatal Moonbank. How do those roles compare to the ones in Star Trek? Okay, um, about, when did Mass Effect come out? Uh, 2008. 2008. It may have been here, because I was here in 2008, but I remember in 2008, someone stood up and said, um, I love you in Mass Effect. Because, oh, before, you know, I don't know if you know, but they always do the voices first, and then they, uh, voices always come first, and then they make the game. So it can take years for the game to come out, right? So somebody stood up and said, I love you in Mass Effect. And I said, what are you talking about? <laughs> you did a game called Mass Effect. I said, no, I didn't. 
They said, no, you did, your name's on it. I went, they're lying. Right? <laughs> to sell more games, they're lying. And he said, no, you did it, it's your voice. And I was like, well, wait a minute. Because it was so long and I'm so old, I forget everything now, you see. And I had totally forgotten that I had done this game. Now, to be honest, doing game voices is a little tedious because you have to say the lines over and over and over again, right? So, and you're in a studio, you know, with headphones on and um, you're not acting with anybody and you, they, just, they just literally give you your lines. They don't give you, I didn't get the whole script, I just get my lines. And it's, it's really, it's not fun. I have to be honest, it's not fun. You guys love it um, and it's great, but as an acting job, it's not why I became an actor, to do voices on video games, sorry. I've hurt so many people now, but I do, but, but you know I'm always honest, I'm sorry, but it's, you know, it's true. It's, it's kind of repetitive, doing video games. You're welcome. Yeah, but Michael, you were, you did a voice in... Uh, oh, but she's yeah. awesome. You no, you don't get to do that now. No, no, she's awesome. No, I've seen a picture of her. She all is video games. awesome. You don't get to do that. She, she looks awesome. She is awesome. But you, she has to get killed. I'm a bit pissed that she has to. You have to kill her in the game. Spoilers. <laughs> Michael, you were in, uh, you did a voice in, in Fallout 2. Yes. Yeah, and I, I was beside myself, because I'd been off the show for a while uh, by the time that game came out. And I was crazy for that game. Oh, really? And I loved it that you were in that game. And made I kept your character with my party to the end of the game. <laughs> yeah. Which I did not do with my friend Felicia Day, who is a character in Fallout New Vegas. I don't know what they're talking about. I, I couldn't bring myself to let you die. And I was like, get rid of her. I want the dog back. But Does anyone ever read a book? Does anybody ever? How long was the makeup for that uh, voice role, Michael? <laughs> it's lovely to see all of you again. Um, my question kind of starts with a backstory. First of all, for many of us, you have become our heroes. And with this holiday, in remembrance of our veterans and those who have served and are serving, I'm just wondering. Who would you consider are your heroes? Good question. Uh, I, I have a, I mean, luckily uh, when, I, um, when I was doing the show, I, I was sort of like a, a map, I became a mascot to the Navy and Air Force, you know, because I'm a pilot and all the all the pilots. And, and that was, it was really cool, you know, with the fighter pilots. I always thought that they were great. But the guys that, that got me were the kids uh, that were, 17, 18, 19, you know, out there working, you know, especially on aircraft carriers. Uh, these guys are out there working, you know, 18 hours a day, and they're kids. I mean, they're literally kids, and they're doing really hard, dangerous work. And I always thought that they were guys that were, uh, that really were kind of like the backbone that we, uh, that we don't hear about. Yeah. <laughs> Um, as an army brat, um, uh, my father served in both Korea and Vietnam, and for me, the heroes are the families who stay behind and hold it down while they're away on duty. My heroes are anybody who works to save animals. Yeah. Whether. Whether you volunteer in a rescue or a shelter, whether you're radical and you break into labs and set the animals free. <laughs> They're my heroes. Don't say it. It's, it's too embarrassing. But thank you, anyway. <laughs> you know, I don't know. I've never even thought about who my heroes are. Uh, uh, let me think about it. 
How interesting is this? Uh, no, I'll tell you what. Uh, I, the only first-hand experience where I've come face-to-face -face with heroes, when we were um, doing the series, at some point in time, we were all invited to Washington, D.C. Uh, to celebrate the 30th anniversary of Alan Shepard's first space flight. I didn't go because I had a convention that weekend, and I went to see my fans. <laughs> You chose poorly. Yeah. Uh, the rest of us went, fortunately, and uh, we, uh, we met uh, all of the Mercury astronauts that weekend. Uh, we were at the uh, vice president's house. It was, uh, at the time, uh, Dan Quayle. I don't know if you remember him. Uh, I couldn't spell potato. It was great. There were all sorts of, like, safety bumpers all over everything. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> But they were all there, all, all of the uh, Mercury astronauts and uh, some of the Apollo astronauts, some of the uh, uh, Gemini astronauts were there. Uh, but Alan Shepard and John Glenn and uh, Wally Sherrod, all of the astronauts were there and they lined up to get our autographs. And it was just insane. There we were, pretend heroes, in the midst of serious heroes who got into capsules and were catapulted into space. Uh, it, it was an awesome experience to be in, in contact with those guys. Well, actually, LeVar, LeVar took us, invited us to an event. Where was it? In, <laughs> sorry, Bill, it's just off the point, but you'll be next. Um, uh, this is how we treated him for, you know, for five years. Sorry. Bill. But anyway, um, right. remember I'm when gonna, you took I'm us to that? I'm gonna leave when there's 20% of the panel left. Okay. Just get um, <laughs> remember when you took us to that event? In, was it in Cape Canaveral? And we met all the oh, ast the charity yeah. event. The the Astronaut Scholarship Foundation. The Astronaut Scholarship Foundation, and they and my husband really wanted to go because he's you know he's an Air Force brat, and so he was like really into space and all that stuff, and he's like, let me come, let me come, and I'm like, no, you can't come. I'm working. <laughs> I'm gonna worry about you sitting, wonder what you're doing all day. So. <laughs> Anyway, um, he didn't come. And uh, when I went home with a picture of me with Neil Armstrong, yeah. Uh, let's just say, he, because I said to him, there won't be anybody important there. They'd just be like minor shuttle astronauts. And they were all there, the big guys. And um, he still hasn't forgiven me, actually, still to this day. I'm pretty sure that the minor shuttle astronaut is still a pretty big deal. Thank yeah, you, sir. But, yeah, but they didn't go on the moon or anything, right? They're not Neil I'm, Armstrong. I, let me say it again. Around up I'm there. pretty sure there's still kind of a big deal. They, they just go up a little bit higher than the aeroplanes, right? They just go round and fix things. My heroes are teachers. I have been more inspired by teachers than any other uh, g general group of people in my entire Thanks life. Thanks a lot. <laughs> I'm, I'm a writer because of my teachers. I'm a good actor because of my drama teachers. And I'm a good parent because uh, I was taught by my parents and, uh, and, and the people that were around us um, when I was growing up. Uh, but I, you know, I look out, ev every single day and I have friends who are teachers and I, I watch uh, uh, just the entirety of the United States government aligned against education for no good reason. And I, there's a very good reason, Will. Will, there's a very good reason. Kids can't vote. That's right. the reason. Um, and it drives me crazy, and I think teachers are really important, and I think education is, is, is the most important thing that you can do with your life. The, the more you know, the more you can do with yourself. And uh, that, that is a value that was instilled in me by a teacher. So, teachers are heroes. Thank you very much. The medics. The medics. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, well, we, you know, we could go through firefighters, policemen, you know, all those people are heroes. Anyone who puts their life in danger to protect their community is a hero. Because I wouldn't run into a burning building. I wouldn't, you know, challenge someone with a gun. 
unless I had a bigger gun. Um, you know, I mean, really. So all those people. But are if heroes, someone but held up a gun, you would know, like, if they were, like, you know, hiding something. <laughs> Don't make me come over there, will we? All right. And then there are those of us who are brave enough to sit on a panel with Marina. <laughs> That's why you're my hero, Brent. Thank you. Okay. I have a question for Brent. Hi. How hard is it to get into character and stay into character for data? Data. Yeah. Data, data, whatever, right? <laughs> He's never data seen the top. show. Someone sent him up to ask that question. That's why he said data wrong. How hard is it to stay in character? Uh, am I still doing? <laughs> I'm out of character now. This is not... Uh... No, you know what? It was very easy because um, we rehearsed uh, before we ever shot. So all of the stuff that uh, the clowning and the laughing and the misbehaving, that all happened before they said action. But once they said action, it was easy. It was just, that was the job. So it wasn't difficult at all. When I sat next to him on the bridge, uh, uh, Brent would, <laughs> we were getting ready to roll, and Brent would go, hey, hey, and I'd look over at him, and he would like make these faces at me. <laughs> like, do you remember the faces you used to make at me? Like, I'm not gonna make you do it now, but I mean, oh. do you remember the things you used to do? I, I do, like, yes. And it killed me, killed me, killed me, killed me. Every single time, it was the funniest thing I'd ever seen in my life. I would start cracking up and they'd be like, okay, we're rolling now. And Brent would just go like, zap, I'm Data. And I'm like trying to get myself <laughs> together. And I'm constantly getting in trouble. And I'm like, it's him. And Brent is just like that childlike innocence of Lieutenant Commander Data. How could he possibly have done that? And the unruly kid sitting next to him. Yeah, I mean, it was like, <laughs> Occam's Razor says it was me screwing up. That was fun. <laughs> okay. okay, good. I have one last thing to say. Live long and prosper. Thank you, you too, buddy. Wrong show, isn't it? No, that's Star Trek. Oh. No, no, I know it's Star Trek. But it's you think not... we're here for the but Mass not... Effect panel, no, and it's no, no, not. No, it's no, Star no, Trek. No, no, no. We never said it on our show. That's what I meant by wrong show. We never said it on TNG. It's the sentiment that counts. Oh, okay. All right. I thought our, we were like, make it so, right? That's what I was out. I remember when Mr. Spock was on Star Trek The Next Generation. <laughs> And just one episode. <laughs> and his daddy. Two. You're right. Okay, go ahead. Next question. Seven. Let's just. Uh, let's just. <laughs> yes, it is Enterprise, which was a two-parter. Well, it counts as one episode. Two-part, one episode. Anyway, um, let's go. Uh, <laughs> I was wondering, um, what was your guys' favorite uh, guest star that showed on the series? Guises? What the heck is a guise? Guess, uh, guest stars. Guest stars. Oh, guest oh no, stars. you said you guises. You guises. Oh. I love that. Is that you a, know, actually, Arizona thing? Guys, um, guys is the plural of guy. You don't have to put an extra ES on it. This is your, I will be your English grammar teacher as well this afternoon. Remember that panel where Marina made lots of friends? No. Y'all love me. You know y'all You know love what? Me. I really loved it when Billy Campbell worked on the show and played the outrageous Okona. Um, that episode was kind of, was like, wasn't one of our better ones, but he just, like, I just, I really liked him and he was so nice to everybody. He's a lovely and, bloke. He's a lovely and, bloke. Yeah, he's best friends with uh, my good friend Colin Ferguson. And uh, uh, they... And I was like, Colin was like, do you, do you, she was like, blah, 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 my friend Billy. And I said, wait, do you mean Billy Campbell? And he goes, yeah, do you know him? And I said, well, I mean a little bit. We did one episode of Star Trek together. And apparently he's exactly the same now he is, he as he was he when we did Next Generation he is, he together. He's so cool. Who watches The Killing? You know, you're, you're pathetic. 
Honestly. Lots of like friends the that day. Best thing on TV. Right? Just so it's, many friends. Because TNG, I know, no, really. Because TNG, I know it's not on anymore. You know, the killing is amazing, and Michelle Forbes is in it, and Billy Campbell is in it. You have to watch this show. It's really cool. It's on um, AMC, right before Mad, oh, right before Mad Men. Okay. But he's amazing. He hasn't changed an iota, and he's done so much. And the only thing he's changed really is his name. He's changed his name a lot. He went from Bill to William to Billy. Now he's Billy. Okay, that's it. He was my favourite too, because he's so cute. Guess who? Uh, guest star. My favorite guest star that we had, it's hard to, we had so many great guest stars. We really did. And, and not to mention Michelle Forbes several times and Gene Simmons and uh, uh, Mick Fleetwood. Mick Fleetwood, who, uh, from Fleetwood Mac, who, who shaved a beard he'd had for 30 years wow. to play basically seafood on our show. <laughs> he was a fish was of a fish. some sort. He had one word, it was food, and he couldn't remember it. <laughs> They actually, after about take 10, brought a card in that said food, and uh, then it turned out he couldn't read. <laughs> well, that my, was my, an embarrassing day. Of, it was, wasn't it? My, my favorite of all was um, Saul Rubinek, who played uh, right. Kiva Sancho uh, in The Most Toys. A very inventive actor and uh, uh, just great. And did that as a backup. He was called in the last minute well, because he was. of, yeah. It was a, yeah, a sad yeah, thing, a, a, an actor, I, I, I don't want to go into it, it's too sad, Larry. Right, right. But Saul was, told me, because we worked Saul together on Leverage, and Saul told me that you called him, Yes. and he said, yeah, I'll do it, and came in uh, like without knowing anything about it, no, just said, if Brent wants me to do the show, I will do the show, and Saul saved that episode. He did, he was great. The most toys. Yeah. Yes. Dorney? Are you awake? Favorite guest star. You and Sean. What? No. Where am I? Okay. Sure. Dorney, who was your favorite guest star? Oh. Dorney? Hello? Earth to Michael Dorn. Who was your favorite guest star? Um, I, I liked uh, Jean Simmons a lot. I thought she was. I thought that was, that was uh, for a number of reasons. I, I just thought it was, she's old Hollywood. Oh, you didn't mean the kiss guy. No, no, no. Oh. <laughs> I also thought you meant the kiss guy. Because <laughs> if kiss was on Star Trek, then Peter Chris would be in a red shirt. He wasn't on our show. He was on Voyager. <laughs> Go on, Michael. <laughs> you were talking, man. Go. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> you are. What a guy, what a doll. Oh, I said Mick Fleetwood about five minutes ago. I did. Okay. <laughs> then, we, then we're done. Let's I think we've covered I it. I think there. we've covered Next it. Question. All right. Next question, okay. <laughs> did anybody mention Billy Campbell? I <laughs> <laughs> was 14. We run like a well-oiled machine filled with sand. Hi. Um, sorry, I'm trying not to cry right now. Don't cry. You so did that. You did that. You were. I, I met you, didn't I? And you did that when you were crying. What is that? What is it? It's okay if you cry. Go ahead. Um, I give you permission to cry. I'm the mayor of this room, and I give you permission. to cry. towards LeVar and uh, Michael. Um, I just want to know, how was your guys' relationship? Guys's, there it is again. Guys, sorry. <laughs> it is. Don't make fun of me. It's gotta be in Arizona. Welcome then. to Arizona, land of guys's. <laughs> the old faithful guys's, that's what it is. <laughs> Valley <laughs> of the guys's. <laughs> I'm sorry. She, she wanted to know uh, how was the relationship between LeVar and Michael Dorn? Her, personally or the characters? Or uh, pers personally. personally. The truth. <laughs> I'm 
I'm sorry, what was the question? <laughs> Actually, a very interesting story. It, it is, actually. It is a very interesting story. I, um, when I first got the job, I was going, wow, LeVar Burton. Because, you know, he's, he's, he, even at that time, he's still, still, he's an icon. I mean, you know, Roots. And, Kunta. And all this. Uh, but, but, um, and also, <laughs> no, I won't say that one. But uh, we, had a, we had a very, we had a very sort of uh, strange, relationship at first. Rocky start. A rocky start. Rocky start. And um, uh, for, for a lot of different reasons that had nothing to do with, with either of us personally. Well, it was, it, it was in, at least in part your work at Chibs. <laughs> <laughs> and you were pissed because you didn't get that part. I was <laughs> very upset. <laughs> but um, it was a but, big but, Eric Estrada fan. But after, uh, but the funny thing is, is that uh, on the show, it was, it was uh, at first it was a little rocky, but then now, uh, I think after a couple of years or three years, after you had your operation, yes, uh, we had a we had a, a very heart to heart talk and uh, got it all out and everything was was great after that. It was it was you know that was the relationship, but it was uh, it was like I said at first it was yeah, I was looking at him like you know wow you know this is you know a guy I'd love to work with, and then I went no nah, I don't want to work with that much <laughs> <laughs> no but it, it, but it uh, but that that's how it happened. And, uh, but, you know, like, like with all relationships, you know, uh, Marina and I, same thing. I mean, she and I were, were not happy with each other the first year. Uh, and then something happened. It's a great story. Her brother was in town, and she loves her brother. And she said, Michael, my brother, you know, uh, is in town, and he wants to do sports. He loves sports. You know, I heard you play tennis. Would you play tennis with him? And I'm, I'm looking at her like, you know, this is a woman that's never asked me for nothing, you know. And so I go, yeah, okay, I'll play tennis with him, but I don't want to see you. you know? <laughs> and I played tennis with him, and he and I got along famously. Still really good friends, really love the guy. And we go over to her house afterwards for dinner, and she's like cooking. Would you boys like some more pasta? And I'm like, who is this woman? <laughs> I couldn't believe it. She was the sweetest thing in the world, you know? And it just goes to show you really, you know, that, you know people, you can't judge a book by the cover. And from that moment, she and I were very close. And like I said, LeVar, uh, actually, LeVar and I got, was, were close on uh, Next Generation, but we got really close on Deep Space Nine because he directed a bunch of those. And we were... Uh, yeah. Some great episodes, some great episodes. So. Thank you. You're welcome. There you go. Take a breath now. <laughs> Which was the most difficult episode, like acting-wise? Or were there any, was it difficult at all? I'll go first again, because my mind's obviously working faster than everybody else is up here today. Um, Probably final mission. Yes. Uh, I would say the scenes that I had to be, I, had, I was raped twice in, in Star Trek, once in an episode and once in a movie. And I think as a woman, probably the hardest <laughs> Go on, Marina, come on. That was it? That's it. She asked what was the hardest episode, and I said that oh, when I was raped, and I'm sure all the women can understand that that would be really hard to add, right? It's really emotional. God, it's like pulling teeth up here tonight, honestly. Shall I go? Yes. Uh, yes. Well, for me, it, I, did, I had done this episode. Uh, it was the one where I was sort of, it was kind of a Frankenstein story-ish. Old medieval town, me and a little girl. You remember that? Yeah. What was that? Real was late. That? Was that last season? No, was it? Yeah, final oh. season, yeah. Uh, who are you? Uh, <laughs> no, I, I'm sorry. Uh, and uh, <laughs> to recognize, that's... Uh, it's uh, Patrick, right? <laughs> oh, Captain. Uh, uh, no, I, uh, yeah. Uh, anyway, I was doing this episode, and we had this thing usually, uh, particularly in the last couple of years, where they really figured out how to do it, where one person would sort of carry a show, one or two people, and everybody else had an easy schedule. We'd do one day on the bridge together, and then the person who was featured would take the episode. And uh, that was my episode. We did one day at the beginning with the whole cast. 
And then the rest of the schedule was just me and this little girl and whoever else was in the show. And uh, the next episode following that, I received at maybe 10 o'clock at night on the last day of that episode. And the very next episode was called Masks, where I had to play five characters. And uh, we were starting in the morning with me playing five characters. I barely had time to read the script, much less figure out who these five characters were. And um, so we started the next day. And if you see the episode Masks, I think it's uh, remarkable. It, thank you. It's, it's actually remarkable for some of the most preposterous <laughs> acting ever put on the screen. It's, uh, Marina was laughing at me while I was doing it. Uh, so I was doing one of the characters, she's sitting across from me laughing in my face while I'm trying to be heartbreaking. And, uh, and then there was a, a moment at the very end, the very last day of that shoot, finally, was me and Patrick, four o'clock in the morning on a Saturday. The crew was dead. They wanted us to finish so they could go home and go to sleep. And I had to wear a mask and be the goddess of the moon. And uh, pa Patrick was sitting across from me off camera talking to me. Every word out of my mouth, he would burst out laughing. And, uh, and the crew was getting more and more furious. And uh, finally, they turned the camera around on him, and he had to wear a mask and be the god of the sun. And I could not get through a line of it with him. I laughed at everything he said. The crew hated us. We finished probably, you know, a couple of months later. <laughs> that was most difficult for me. You know, I, um, I don't remember having a difficult episode. <laughs> yeah, you know, that sounds right. <laughs> So, um, at this point, I'll give it over to LeVar. Wasn't, wasn't it the one with Paul Sorvino where you had to wear no makeup? No, I'm just kidding. I was a lizard once. <laughs> and uh, I, I, I yet the, the, the fluorescent veined creature. And uh, I think all told, I was in makeup between putting it on and taking it off 21 hours oh. for that episode. Boy, that was fun. Oh, yeah. Good times. The glow, the glow in the dark. Good times. With Mark and Brian running. With back. Mark and Brian, uh, a couple of local disc jockeys in, in Los Angeles who, who didn't spend nearly as much time in the makeup chair as I did. They kind of whisked out, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hi, um, my question is for Will Wheaton. Um, in the last, uh, the last movie uh, um, that they did for Star Trek, um, Star Nemesis, Trek Nemesis. Nemesis, yeah. Um, you showed up at the wedding scene. Yes. Did they ever show what happened between your character from the last Next Generation episode where you kind of took off the Traveler and that time? I heard that there was like a deleted scene, but I... Um, well, here's how that whole thing came about. Um, where did I see you, Lavar? We were at the same, where, where, do you remember where we were? We were someplace at the same place at the same time. <laughs> yeah. I think we saw each other, right? <laughs> LeVar and I were doing a thing, and I can't remember what it was, and LeVar said, and I said, because I had heard, I'd read in the entertainment press that it was the last Star Trek movie, and at this time, like, I hadn't really spent, I hadn't really talked to any of these guys for a really long time, and, um, I, uh, and I said to LeVar, uh, hey, I heard that it's like, is it really the last movie? And LeVar said, yeah, it is. And I said, that, that makes me really sad um, just because it means like, you know, the next generation is coming to an end. And we talked about it a little bit and LeVar asked me if I was gonna be in it. And I said, oh, there's, there's no way I'm gonna be in it. There's, they would never put me in that movie. And, I, and, and LeVar said, why? And I said, because Rick Berman hates me and, and there's no way I'm gonna be in the movie. And he said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go talk to some people and see if, if, if you can be in the movie because you should be in the movie. 
And I said, like, that's really sweet and kind of you, but it's never gonna happen. And a few days later, I got a call from my agent that they wanted, you know, the Paramount is offering you the role of Wesley Crusher in Star Trek Nemesis. And, uh, and I said, well, yeah, of course, I'll, I'll do it. And he said, well, don't you wanna know what it is? And I said, I don't care what it is. The, the scene doesn't matter. What really matters to me is getting to go work on Star Trek The Next Generation with people I love who I have, who I have not had the courage to talk to for a very long time. And finally, as an adult, at that time in my like late 20s, um, appreciate working on Next Generation in a way that I didn't have the ability to appreciate when I was a teenager, just because teenagers do not have that skill set. We haven't leveled up yet enough to know how to do that. And, and, it, was, and it was great. It was really, it was an incredible, it was two unbelievable days of my life. And I asked John Logan, the screenwriter, uh, so what's going on? Like, I'm gonna get asked this at a convention in 12 years, I said to him. Is, is, uh, is Wesley Crusher, like, did he come back to Starfleet from, like, you know, roaming around the galaxy in the traveler's windowless white van eating chloroform candy? Or, like, or, or was he, like, at Starfleet Academy? And, and, and John Logan said, I, I don't really have enough space in the script to really address that, so you're just there and you're in a uniform and either you are, uh, it's like the audience can just choose, it's one or the other, because it ultimately it really doesn't matter. And there was this great scene with Wesley, Beverly, and Picard, um, where Picard is like, oh, it's so great to see you, and Beverly's like, look at he looks really great, but the way that we played it was that Wesley had like seen a girl dancing at the wedding, and was like, listen, I'd love to stay here and talk with you, but Uncle Wesley's gotta go hit that, so <laughs> if we could just wrap this up, that would be great. It started this journey for me that brought me back to, to feeling okay about myself and my, 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 my place in, uh, in the, the, the family of the cast of Next Generation. And it is entirely because LeVar said, I'm gonna go talk to some people. Thank you. Good going, LeVar. <laughs> so I, I, I remember uh, that day when you came and talked to me and I said yes. <laughs> Yes, he can be back uh, in the movie. Yes. Well, well, it's just lucky that it wasn't me and you at a convention or wherever we were, because they would never listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We've got time for just a few more questions. Well, hi, thank you so much for um, coming back to Arizona. Yeah. Um, it's and our thank you, you guys are the best. Here. This is actually a fantastic convention. And, and uh, if you enjoy this convention, you should do, like, make an effort to find somebody from the staff or find a volunteer and tell them thank you. This is one of the best run conventions in, in the entire United States. There you go. And I just want to ask, what was your favorite special effect to work with? Uh, Brent Spiner. <laughs> I was very fond of the crystalline entity. Woo! Who can forget the crystalline that's, that's entity? That's the one that, that, that Laura was trying to fool by beaming a large uh, object, perhaps a tree, out into I, space. I don't know. I show didn't play Laura. What? Oh, <laughs> Any takers on that one there? I, uh... It was great. It was blue screen. Well, yeah, but still. It was CG, it was... Or live effect. A, a, you, had a big, you had a big leap in the blue screen on the one show where people were killing themselves, right? I just had to jump. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it wasn't scary, okay. Stage effects. Actually, actually the, the, the special effects um, were, were played by one guy named Cosmo Genovese, who was our yeah. script supervisor. Oh, okay. And he had to do all the lines for all the aliens that you see on the screen that we didn't see at the time. So he was doing all the lines for them, and, uh, and it was it was always a joy because he was dead serious about these aliens, <laughs> and uh, you know we didn't know what they looked like or anything. You know, they just all looked like Cosmo to us. You know. So. They interviewed him for the Blu-ray. Yeah, I heard they did. Uh, um, he was the greatest. He really was. You'll see when you see the Blu-rays. He was yeah. unbelievable. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you. You're welcome. I thank you. 
Um, I'm Angie Nickel, and this is my daughter, Erin. Um, we're huge fans. My husband was a huge fan. I'm introducing her to the series now. Um, my husband was supposed to be here with us today, and unfortunately, at the last minute, um, the Air Force deployed him to Afghanistan. So we're, our question was just simply, could you guys all just say, hi, Papa? Hi, hi Papa. Hi. How are you doing? Thank you. Hold safe. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hello. Uh, my name is Ian, and I just wanted to thank all of you guys for the work you've done, both on TNG and off of it. All the side projects you've done, the video games, chips. Creating a rainbow. <laughs> yes. And, um, yes. Um, my particular question is about a uh, web series some of you may have heard of called Tabletop. Uh, oh, cool. <laughs> I, I just wanted to ask you, Will, um, how do you go about selecting what games you guys want to play on the show? I know the, game, uh, the show is in its kind of infancy stages. I'm sure you're getting through all the really big ones that everyone knows and you want everyone to know about. But also, um, as a game designer that has just finally gotten his game uh, picked up by a publisher after years of work, how does someone get their game that they've worked so hard on played by you guys? Because that would be like the ultimate honor to me. We choose games for tabletop that are what, what we think of as gateway games, games that show people. Uh, tabletop is a web series I co-created with Felicia Day. It's on her Geek and Sundry YouTube channel, and it's a show where we play tabletop board games with uh, actors and writers and artists and musicians and people that we know. It's like Dinner for Five meets Celebrity Poker uh, with board games. And we want games, we want to play, we want to play, well then you should come be on the second season, Marina. <laughs> We, we play. Not video games, right? They're not video games. They're, they're board, board games. games. Oh, yeah. Board games. Um, the, they're, they're, we want games that are gateway games that people can play that are uh, they're easy to learn, that have a lot of luck, that have a lot of strategy, um, so that we can show people that board gaming is an awesome a hobby, that it's a really terrific family activity. And yeah, that's okay. what you're doing. Yes. Um, yeah, and that's and so anyway, that, that's how we do it. We're, we're not sponsored by game companies. We don't do anything like that. I play the hell out of every game that I can get my hands on, and if I really like it, then it gets on the show. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Thank you all. Yeah. Got time Hi, for uh, just a couple more. Hi, my name is Lewis. This question is for uh, Michael Dorn. Yep. Did you really drink Romulan ale? <laughs> uh, no, I did not. Okay. No, I did not. Um, it was, it was, uh, you talking about in the last movie? Yes. No, no, that was, that was um, a scene in a movie. And uh, <laughs> they actually make it so I didn't know if you actually I drank know, it. I know. No, it was a tail end of drinking that, but no, I, I, I don't even know what it tastes like. I know what, you know, prune juice tastes like, but not. <laughs> Thank you. Hello. Hi. 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 What's your question? Uh, um. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna rearrange. Drink it all. I want to know how long it takes all of you to put on your makeup. Uh, how long does it take me to put your makeup on? <laughs> An hour 45. Exactly. You uh, were an hour 15. I was an hour 15. Dorney was like five and a half hours. I was, yeah, I was three hours from the start. Um, but they got wow. it down to an hour and 45 to get yeah. the last part. Of the show. But I was an hour and 45 too. Kind of scary, huh? <laughs> That's how bad I look first thing in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> How's that? What makeup? LeVar. It, it, it took roughly 30 seconds to put the visor on. <laughs> Roughly, give or take. Lazy, lazy actors and actresses. You need to stand up. Only the lazy actors sit down. This is what she said. Just copy what she said. My dear, you really need to pick better role models. <laughs> I surprisingly do actually have a question. How's your Patrick Stewart? <laughs> that was
was brilliant. Thank you. My mum's from England. Okay. So I know that it's not Guy Zez, it's guys. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and on that day, the Second babes. Revolutionary the War was the babes. I wanted to know what's the craziest thing a fan has done other than me. Um, yeah. To everyone? Okay, I have a crazy question that a fan asked me. Um, I, I was asked by a fan at a convention, why is it that all the guest stars on Star Trek are humanoid, or the guest aliens, I should say, are humanoid in shape? <laughs> <laughs> Think about it. To which I responded, well, of course, when we start auditioning actors who aren't humanoid in shape, that will change. <laughs> It's pretty remarkable the things that we were able to do with, uh, with, with the budget and the time that we had. Uh, just doing makeup on people and uh, we did not have CGI when we did Next Generation. We don't have the things that you really take for granted these days. And uh, I think that, that Next Gen can claim a little bit of credit for uh, proving that it was possible to do a, a popular science fiction program with aliens, with all of the things that science fiction uh, uh, embodies. Uh, and that lays the groundwork for shows that have come since, not just in the Star Trek universe. Um, and if you, you know, if you watch some of the, some of the first run sci-fi shows now that have incredible computer graphics, I mean, I just can't even imagine what we would have been able to do if, if, we, had, if we had had access to that kind of technology. Yeah. Time for one last question. Uh, I wanted to say, actually, I wanted to thank like you guys for doing all those book on tapes things where you oh. talked because I discovered this new technology thing called a Walkman. It's really old. <laughs> and I listen to your books and tape every night before you go to bed. What's your name? Sophia. Sophia, are you going to be an actress? Thank you. Okay, good. <laughs> last question. Okay. This is the last Number one, thank you all for coming. I really appreciate getting the chance to meet every one of you, even if it's just for a second. Um, I'll try to truncate my question really quick for you guys. Um, <laughs> what is one of your favorite projects, uh, games, movies, TVs that you've done besides TNG? Reading Rainbow of all the things I've done. I'm most proud of that. Anybody know the song? You know the song? Butterfly in the sky, I can go twice as high. Take a look, it's in a book. Give yourselves a hand. I guess uh, one of my favorite projects, I'm, I'm currently working on my own web series called Fresh Hell. Yes. Uh, check it out, freshhellseries.com. Please write it down. Let me see you writing. Freshhellseries.com. Does everyone know the song? Fresh Hell. <laughs> I, um... I raised two stepkids from yes. the time they were three and five. And when my, when my older stepson Ryan was 19, he came home from college and he told me that uh, I have been uh, more of a father to him his entire life than his biological father. And he loves sci-fi and he loves writing and he loves music and he loves art because of the influence I had on him. And he asked me if I would adopt him. And I said, yes, I would very much love to do that. And the project I am most proud of in my life is the raising of my two sons. Yeah. You know what? Well, that should have been last. You should have been last, because now we all sound really pathetic. You, you, got, you know, if we ever ask this again, you go last, okay? Because nothing we... Hell. Yeah. It doesn't matter what we did after that, really, at all. Okay, well, I'll go anyway. 
Um, is it Mass Effect? Say not, Mass Effect. No, it wasn't Mass Effect. It wasn't Mass Effect. I did, a, I did an independent movie that went straight to DVD, but, you know, I don't care. Because um, after Deanna Troy, it was the, the favorite part that I had ever played. I play, it's a m movie called um, Green Street 2, Green Street Hooligans 2, Stand Your Ground. And it's about, um, it's about soccer hooligans in England. Um, I'm a big soccer fan, and I have to say, I did used to be a bit of a, did, yes, football, but I'm in Arizona. Don't make me come over there. <laughs> I have a Spurs tattoo on my shoulder that outdoes anything that you have. So, um, so anyway, um, I, so I'm, a, I'm this really evil prison guard in a men's prison. And um, when one of the ex extras said to the director, um, well, Marina's a lesbian, right? I knew that my work was done. <laughs> Actually, the, um, uh, the show that, um, that was on, I mean, that, that I did last year, uh, Castle, I thought was, uh, really, it, it is not a, it's not a huge part, it was like at the end of like four episodes that, that I did, but uh, I thought it was some of the coolest work, it was very, very cool, and that, that, that's been my favorite outside of uh, Star Trek, although I'm sure that some would say chips. Yeah. But, uh, I know, but that, I, that I was... Just, was, was that the last question? Okay, yes. I just have to, I just have to say something before we go. Um, I didn't bring my passport with me. So, if I get arrested um, in Arizona here for not having my papers... Because <laughs> I do look like, you know, for a bit ethnic. Would you bail me out of jail? Because... Right? Because... If they send me to Mexico, it's the wrong country. I remember when uh, Will's son came to me and said, I think I've made a huge mistake. On that note, we are out of time. Thank you to the God. cast for coming. Yes. Thank you to you guys for coming. Give them a Have hand. a great convention. Thank you all. We'll be signing in the signing hall. Come see us. Everybody here will be down signing at their booths. Larry and the cast will be there. Go there and say hi, it'll be a great time.